Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this batch of cards. I actually made about nine of them and I recorded it live narrating, but it was a hot mess. And I decided I'll take a, a shot at it, voicing it over. I don't know if it's gonna be any better because I really don't know if this the whole uh, process seems con coherent at all, but I'm using what I have and I'm using some layering stamps, which I don't use very often. And um, I'm just making some cards. Um, now, I don't have one of those fancy stamp positioners that are hinged. I know probably most of you have one. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but I did have this old letterpress jig, which is back probably about 10 years ago when letterpressing was really popular. Um, I got one of these on clearance and I was curious because I made a homemade one and it worked great, but I was curious as how the how the store-bought one would work. And it worked the exact same as my homemade one, but it was, you know, prettier looking. Uh, so I thought, I bet I could use that as in place of like a, um, you know, stamping platform. And it worked fantastic. And I can even line up and restamp an area if it didn't stamp very well, like I did on that previous card. So because I was going to make a bulk or a multitude of these cards, I didn't want to put these stamps on blocks and have to, you know, manually line it up every time. I knew that if I worked like this, then I could stamp each layer on all my cards and then move on to the next one. So when you're using these uh, layered stamps, it's usually a little uh, map on the back of the package. It tells you how to line everything up. Like there's a couple little spots you can look for on the stamp to make sure you have them lined up. And that's what I did. I just laid the next layer on top of my base layer on the card and then closed the platform to pick up the stamp. And then when I stamped it on top, it's gonna be in the right place on every card. So um, that foam tape that you see on my, um, on my platform, that's just as a paper stop to keep my paper from moving. So it'll always stamp in the right place. And they, you could see my, you know, lovely, pretty layered flower because I've got all three layers down. Gosh, I hope this makes sense. I'm sure you've used layering stamps before. You've seen a much more talented stamper use them on YouTube and you know what I'm talking about here. Um, so now I'm gonna do some green, uh, some green leaves here. So I cut a mask out of a post-it note for the flower. I'm covering the flower up and I'm laying all of the base layers down at once. So that's another advantage of using a stamp platform or a, you know, <laughs> DIY version like I have here is that you can stamp multiple things at one time and everything is going to line up on each layer. I had to move one of the leaves there because it didn't look quite right. So I'll just have to remember to line it up on not the template, but one of my real cards for the next layer. But they do look really pretty when you kind of get all those layers down. Um, it kind of makes all the tediousness worth it. Um, but it's something that, you know, if, if I'm gonna do it, then I wanna have a system set up so that I can get a bunch done at once because it is kind of a pain. But man, isn't it pretty? I think it's so pretty. But you know what, then again, while I was doing that, I was thinking, oh, I don't think it's pretty enough. I think it's kind of bland. I feel like I need to do something to the background. I just felt like I needed to like fancy it up a little bit. We'll get to that in a minute. But I also realized I forgot to do the stem. So I am not going to line all that back up on the stamping platform for that. The stem's easy. I just put one side, the, the base color on one side of a block, the shadow on the other side, and I just stamped them all by hand. I just made sure I put my mask down first so that the stem would appear to be coming out of the flower and not just like stamp on top of it. Like, um, you know, I don't know, like what? Like what? Like something I would typically do. I want it to be a little classier than that, folks. So uh, so we've got our stem in there. I also used this set from an Altenew stamp set called Sending You Sending Hugs Your Way. I thought that was just simple and fun for Happy Mail. And there is the stamping portion for the most part. So I wanted to add a little bit of water in the vase. I just wanted to, you know, maybe define the vase a little bit more because it was kind of light. So I pressed the ink pad that I used for the vase layer onto a palette and I scribbled a um, blue marker onto the palette too, because I'm gonna use that blue marker to add a little definition. And I decided to add a little bit of an artistic flair. So I'm, I'm sketching in a waterline here. You don't have to be, you know, fussy with it. You don't have to have it perfect. Just kind of get a curved line there. It's not gonna matter if it's a little lopsided. Who knows, maybe that table was cro crooked. I'm not gonna worry about it. Just get a line in there. Um, I'm using a gray marker just to put a little shadow underneath and add a few reflections into the vase and help define it a little bit. And any color that you use with a marker, feel free to scribble out onto your palette because you can pick that color up for shading and it just helps it look a little bit more artistic, a little bit more realistic. Now I'm using a Winkostella pen, which if you don't know what that is, it's actually like a water brush filled with a glue 
glittery mixture. And this is the clear one, which I think is the most useful one to have. And I'm just kind of spreading out that ink a little bit. I'm picking up some ink from the um, my tray there, but um, yeah, just kind of painting it in. If I was working on a watercolor paper, I could spread the ink out a little bit more that's on my card. But since this is just cardstock, I have to pick it up from the, um, from the palette there because on cardstock, your ink kind of soaks in a little bit more and doesn't want to move with a water brush after you've stamped it down, but it will on like watercolor paper or Bristol. So now what I want to do is some inky backgrounds because, and honestly, when I was all done, I, after a few days, I realized I liked it plain without the inky background better, but um, I was just feeling like, oh, I put all this work into the stamping and now the background is so bland. It doesn't even look like I worked at all. So I decided I needed to really jazz up the background, which I later regretted just to be sure, just to be clear, I later regretted all this background, but um, you might like it. You might like it more. I liked it more at first, but then I liked the plain version more later. Uh, so I'm just using some blending brushes. You can use sponges. You can use whatever you have. I thought I would kind of put like a little tabletop behind the, um, behind the, the vase there. I wanted to put a little yellow behind the flower to hopefully give the flower a little contrast because I was just, it, it just looked better on the white. Why did I go through all this extra work? You know, hey, it's going to be some techniques. Maybe you'll find it useful on some other card. If you're doing this layered card, I think you just let the, the, the stamping do the, you know, do the work and uh, leave the background plain. But, um, Sometimes you just don't know. You just don't know about your work until it's all done and you've let it breathe for a few days. Like I was working on a painting today and I thought it was trash. And then um, I started an another attempt and then I went back and looked at the first one and the first one was actually decent and the second attempt was total trash. So sometimes you just need a little perspective or you need to give your eyes a break before you pass judgment on your own work. There, pro tip for you. Uh, I'm adding some stamping in the background because I don't know when to, uh, to say when. I don't know when enough is enough. And I added some stamping onto the tabletop area too so it looks little marbly. Um, and plus I was just thinking, oh, I think it'd be fun to use roller stamps. I don't know. I'm just really into using old product right now. Um, I think it's kind of fun, you know, this quarantine card making series using what you have and, and uh, remembering why you liked it in the first place. Cause it's so easy to get distracted with it, what's all new and shiny that we forget about the, you know, stuff we've always loved and it can really reinvigorate your crafting. So I removed the post-it note to reveal my uh, stamp sentiment. And I'm just going to add some little frame, just doodle some frame around here. Make sure your paper's dry. If your paper's at all wet, your Sharpie's not going to work. Your pens aren't going to work. Um, it's just going to be an exercise in frustration. Um, like I was, it was skipping around a little bit there, but um, so, you know, maybe dry it with a heat tool. And then because I felt like I totally obliterated my original stamping and I was really bummed about that, I used a gray color pencil just to shade, out, shade around my vase, just to kind of help it pop from the background a bit. Now, I originally thought this would be a postcard. So I thought I got to protect this because I've got distress ink, distress oxides. It's going to totally run if it gets wet. So um, what I'm using here is something I've just experimented with. This is furniture wax, like the chalk paint wax. And um, it works great to, you just kind of paint on a thin coat, let it dry and then buff it. You can spread it on with your finger, but honestly, I think a paper towel works better or a soft, you know, rag or something like that. Um, but yeah, you can sponge it on. It doesn't lift your ink underneath and it just gives you a protective coating. And it also makes like your distress oxide inks a little bit brighter, which is kind of nice because it kind of glosses it a little bit. You're supposed to let it dry. If you were doing this on furniture, you'd let it dry overnight and then you would buff it. Um, I absolutely detest this product for furniture. I don't like waxing furniture. It's not this product. There's nothing wrong with that project. It's just, I don't like to wax furniture. I'm going to gloss it up and call it a day. There's how that looks on a card. You can also use it as a postcard. I actually ended up making cards with these, putting them on cardstock because after all that work, I thought it was just kind of a waste to make it a postcard, but that's up to you what you want to do. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, or if you just want to, you know, give me a little boost for effort, give me an A for effort. Even if you don't like the project, I would still appreciate a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Um, but that's it for today. Quarantine card making. You gotta love it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.